For this video, we're going to talk about arrow functions in JavaScript, or fat arrow functions, as they're sometimes called. Um, they're a pretty small change, but they're among my favorites to come to ES6, and they're one of the things that I use most often. Um, from like a, an oversimplified view, they're a replacement for the function keyword in JavaScript, um, but they come with one pretty substantial change, which we're going to cover in this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off with an example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a file called arrows.js. Uh, so we can do something here like uh, make a variable, call it, I don't know, something like things, and we'll just put an array inside, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then let's say at some point later we want to map over those things. So we can do things.map uh, function, and then so we'll take each one and we'll call it a thing, and then we'll go out here. Oops and I guess we'll just console log each thing. Okay, so now if I go ahead and save this and run node on it, we should just see one, two, three, four, five, just like we'd expect. So what's really cool here that you can do with these arrow functions, which I think makes the code look a lot more readable, is you can go ahead and you can get rid of the function keyword, and the only thing you have to do differently when you get rid of the function keyword is you have to use one of these, uh, what they call them, arrows. So it's an equal sign followed by a greater than sign. And I think they're fat arrows because a skinny arrow would use a dash, whereas this uses an equals. So if we go ahead and close out of this now and run node on it again, still see one, two, three, four, five. So basically you can kind of go through and change, you know, your code as at will. Um, you know, you can make these differences, remove function, and then add this uh, equals arrow. There's uh, some other cool uses that, you know, maybe take a little bit of time to get your head around, but let's say, um, let's go ahead and delete this, I guess. So we'll do the same kind of thing, right? So we'll do like um, things.map, and then we'll do this pretty wild looking thing, which is like for each thing, we will, and then the arrow here, console log thing, something like that. Um, let me make sure I got that syntax right here. Go ahead and run node again. Yeah, so we still got it. So basically what's going on here is that, um, and this is really familiar if anybody comes from a functional language like Haskell or Scala or anything like that. Um, it's just a shorthand, right? Like So instead of, we don't need the function, um, but then we honestly don't even need the um, the outer function either wrapping thing because basically we can just do this fat arrow for you know for each thing uh and like you could even do something like let's see let's uh let's delete some of this stuff and let's say like we wanted to um i don't know like take out a property or something like that i guess this is an array so you couldn't but you could just as easily do you know thing dot length or thing dot to string or anything like that right and then you could do like var um, strings equals right so you could start writing code like this which is pretty cool um, it does look pretty dramatically different but i think it's really cool and it's worth playing around with it has full node support um, so you should be able to go ahead and start using it today um, the one gotcha that i did mention is that it changes the context of the this keyword when you do one of these. So let's set up an example. I think MDN has a really good example that I like a lot, right? So um, they have this function that they call person. And inside that function, they have this uh, parameter or this um, attribute bound to this, like this age equals zero. So the person's age is zero. Uh, later on, they're going to do like var p equals instead of to a new person, right? Okay. So that's pretty good so far. So you get back this function, and the function has this dot age set, and that's it. Um, but where you run into trouble with JavaScript is if you do any of these async calls, like a set interval or a set timeout. So if you run like set interval, and hopefully a lot of you have run, you know, kind of been bitten by this before, um, and they have this function called grow up. Okay. So basically, as soon as a new person gets returned down here, this set interval is going to fire. And inside this function that we've named grow up, all it's going to do is it's going to take this dot age and add one to it. Uh, and we'll set that on, let's say, like a 1000 millisecond interval. So this seems pretty straightforward where, um, you know, we set a new person and it returns us this thing. It returns us this interval that runs every thousand milliseconds um, and sets this dot age. So the problem is that that this function is being called from the global scope, not inside this person scope. 
Um, and for those that aren't super familiar with JavaScript Scope, I really recommend uh, Kyle Simpson's book, Scope Enclosures, which is part of the You Don't Know JS series, and that's free on GitHub to check out. But so basically what happens is that we, our eyes mistakenly think that this.age is going to be the same as this.age, but it is not. And so the code is going to set this set interval on the window, and it's going to look for a this uh, or an age attribute on the window, which it won't find one. So if you don't have use strict turned on, it's going to go ahead and it's going to create this like window dot age, and it's just going to start plus plusing it each time there. So not only will this dot age inside person never change from zero, but uh, we've accidentally created this global variable, which we don't even really need to know about, and that will be changing. Um, so we can go ahead and um, cause a lot of different bugs and things like that. So for a, a long time, one of the ways that people were solving this, which is, is a little bit ugly, um, is they would go ahead and they would make a new variable, which the set interval can have closure over. So you may have seen something like this before, where people do var self equals this, uh, or maybe they do var that equals this, or something like that. Um, and then they would set that age to be zero. So we're not really, basically what we're doing here is we're kind of leaving the magical this keyword alone now. We're making a little clone of it and then we can reference that from now on. So we can do that age plus plus uh, and that'll work out just fine. The only thing that's kind of unfortunate is it's getting really confusing where we have this nice this given to us but we're kind of ignoring it, making this duplicate copy, all these things. So. The, the cool thing about these arrow functions is that they are lexically scoped, um, scoped to the block that they're inside of, which is really nice. So if we replace this function keyword here with a fat arrow function like this, um, we can go back to using this.age and it is now scoped correctly. The important takeaway here is that there's some pretty big connotations with your this attribute being scoped differently based on whether you use the word function or use a fat arrow. So there are plenty of pitfalls to try to avoid here. I write all of my new code with the fat arrow style, and that's nice because I never have to do the var self equals this or anything like that anymore. However, it makes it unsafe to go through your entire code base and replace all your function calls with fat arrows because if you have anything referencing this, it's going to be referencing something different. So hopefully that helps, um, but I do recommend going ahead and writing all of your new code with the fat arrow style whenever you can.